What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend, a debrief, an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson. Joining me, the host trifecta, uh, I'll come your way first, Miss Abby Lindenberg. Abby, how are you? Great, how are you? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And an almost happy new year to you. Uh, over here to my left, your right, uh, the man, the myth, the Mark Francis. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Good. Hey, I, love this, I love the sand hat. Merry For Christmas. all the viewers, Merry yeah. Christmas to you. Happy New uh, Year. Found this on Roger Locke's desk okay. 20 seconds ago, okay. so went with it. Roger, sorry. Going for the Santa Claus look, the Saint yeah. Nick look, you this, know, a little bit of a... This actually helps me remember which episode was Christmas when I scroll through all 400 episodes uh, on YouTube, so okay. it's also to be festive, but it's also Good. to help, so... Love it. Guys, let's jump into kind of a, a weekend in review because we had uh, Christmas Eve services and a Christmas Day service mm. that, Mark, I know you were a part mm -hmm. of. So, Abby, I'll come your way first. Yeah. Were you able to come to a Christmas Eve service and what did what did Christmas look like uh, for you? Yeah, um, I went to the four o'clock nice. Christmas Eve service. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a good time. I think generally the services always have like a good feel, good vibes. Everyone's pretty happy to be there and excited and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I thought that was great. Yeah. Was, was it pretty packed, the four o'clock? It was, yeah. I heard it was. A little bit late and Jennifer was like, did someone save you seats? And I was like, <laughs> I you're not getting so. in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we found yeah. seats. It was all good. Good. Yeah. I heard a lot of people were invited to that one especially. And that was the last one with childcare. So it kind of makes sense. But there you go. Yeah. I was able to go to the six o'clock one, was in the service for a little bit as well, doing some of the gospel stuff. But yeah, I loved it. I, I love seeing the fresh faces on the stage and I don't know, it. It's, it's not like it's more or less important than other Sundays, but you know it's that time of year where people are in town, like college students are back. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for all of us to come together. And I, I like to always see the direction worship ministry takes and how to c convey the truth of Christmas because right. our Christmas Eve services look different each and every year. Well, Christmas Eve services you know, are, are a specialty service. Yes, it's worship. Right. But it's not um, like the general assembly on a Sunday a morning. But it's not a corporate gathering. Yeah, sure. And, and, you know, it's funny. We talk about this as a worship team. The English language doesn't do the word worship justice, mm -hmm. you know, and so people use that a little loosely. And and so we call we like to call them corporate gatherings because it mm -hmm. truly is that's what we're called to do biblically, um, yeah. which, which is the heart of what Sunday morning was all about. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was Christmas Day. But the, the purpose is, yes, it's also the same time that we meet regularly as a church family, as a body of Christ, mm -hmm. um, to to celebrate what God has done for us, to give attention to his word and to, to recommit our lives to him. And so what we do on Sunday mornings each and every weekend shouldn't change the fact that it happens to be Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes Christmas Eve fun, like you're saying, Abby, and unique, because it is a specialty kind of service that we can catch other people who may not go to church on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but are say, that is Christmas Eve. You know, there's that church thing that we could probably go do. Let's, <laughs> let's go as a family. Let's go, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so how can we tell a story in a compelling way that um, shares the gospel and shares the Christmas story mm -hmm. um, of the incarnation that that is going to um, be engaging to both the believer and non-believer. And sure. so that's, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. So it was a, it was a neat weekend yeah. from, from that perspective. So what did that look like in, in the couple months leading up to it? Because over the years, there's been a lot of stuff incorporated into that service. If people come out to recite scripture, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of different, almost theatrics and, and acting or memorization, and then just a lot of singing as well. Yeah. And one thing I know I appreciate this year was the, the whole story was told through every song we sang mm -hmm. also, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the planning of it, it it's always different every year, mm -hmm. I, I hate to say. Yeah. <laughs> there were in years past where we would actually gather um, the same week as VBS and say, this is our Christmas focus week as a worship team and start thinking about what is Christmas like. Um, we've kind of gotten away from that and it's gotten to, yeah, a couple months, fall, several weeks yeah. in, in advance. We really start thinking and praying about it. And it's a long process. It doesn't just come out of thin air um, in just one sitting. This year is a little bit different as well because I feel like Mike Lukens had a really strong um, hand in what he had envisioned for Christmas Eve to look like. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of having a collaboration as a team, which sometimes can be challenging when you have just such a 
similar common but also nebulous topic. I mean, Christmas is it is what it is. We're going to say the same thing every year, but how can we do it creatively and compelling? Mm -hmm. Well, there are certain songs that were speaking to Mike's heart that you probably saw as special music pieces. Mm -hmm. There's also mm -hmm. the the desire to fully tell a story from the beginning of time, and and, and unpack that that idea of before the foundations of the world, um, mm -hmm. and and sit in that of sit in the fact that you know god is holy and and then through the old testament longing it's challenging to find songs that sing oh, yeah. about the longing and the anticipation without the the results sure mm -hmm. um yeah. same way that sometimes on sunday mornings we we think it's challenging to find songs that just sit in this confession state or sit in this our need for a savior yeah. because most <laughs> most good songwriters are going to end and resolve with the the hope and you know the resurrection or something in that right. yeah so to find pieces and components that would tell that along with the poetry that was written mm -hmm. so um yeah mike had a good hand on that and as a team he he presented kind of a, a skeleton of what that looked like and we would modify it yeah. Um, the same way for Christmas, he asked me to do the same thing for Christmas because as a team, we were really, uh, we're, we weren't pressed for time, but it's, it's sometimes going to be challenging to just as a whole team collaborate and do it all together. Yeah. yeah. So same way I was able to put together skeleton bones of what Christmas day looks like, um, in a short 60 minute period of time, tell that story in a little different way that Christmas Eve was being told. Yeah. So, yeah. but do it from the perspective of corporate gathering and sure. celebrating as a church family as opposed to here's a Christmas story that Christmas Eve can present in a creative, um, yeah, singing and readings and, and, and ultimately gospel presentation yeah. kind of way. Well, it's, it's, it's cool to hear that that much thought goes into it because there is that much there from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. You look at the Bible, you see so much scripture devoted to the anticipation of the gospel, and then you have the gospel itself, and then it's participation yeah. in the gospel. And so... There are so many opportunities on Christmas Eve and Christmas to to find a church. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go see church hop around and see who's doing a Christmas service, and that's mm -hmm. good and great. But I do like that in the time we have. Anytime I get the the worship outline, yeah, I'm like it is so cool that we can fit this much in 75 minutes. Yeah. But it's all worth it too. It's not right. fluff. Like mm -hmm. this is like core truths where a song can end, and you're kind of like, well, that didn't end where. That didn't end in victory. It's like, well, we're a third <laughs> right. of the way through the service. You right. know? Think about that from a biblical perspective. There's 400 years of silence yeah. where people were leaning on promises going, what is all this really about? Yeah. And I want to talk about content too, because it's not oh, just yeah. about the planning and it's not sure. just about the presentation of it, but the content mm -hmm. of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is what we're all about. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, I'm curious kind of what you gleaned as an outsider, Abby, right. of just kind of like, you know, <laughs> what stood out to you and then almost some of my host hat on here, you know, what, Love it. what, what went into yeah. your role of even the gospel presentation mm -hmm. for Christmas Eve? Yeah. 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 Well, I personally am always interested what readings will come out of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like you're saying, like finding ways to introduce the story without doing the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. Like what other scriptures are you pulling in that helps create that picture? That's one thing that I always am kind of like, oh, okay, that makes sense that you pull from here, that these all connect and all that kind of stuff. So I like I like the readings, mm. especially like I thought it was cool that the kids were reading and they didn't just, you know, go out the door and back downstairs. They came and sat in the audience mm. with everyone. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really nice. Just that kids in general were in both services, really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. With with Christmas falling on a Sunday, it, it was it reminded me of the way there's a, a Good Friday service at times and then Easter. Obviously, those are the, yep. kind of the two big things, Christmas yep. and Easter, yep. right? And mm -hmm. so the Christmas story is very different in the sense that it's not, you know, the death and resurrection, but it's the there's a calmness to Christmas Eve that I think a lot of us choose a calmness in that Good Friday and, you know, the meditation of what Christ has done and what he's about to do when he comes back. It's kind of almost the same feeling mm. when you realize there's a baby, you know, being born in a manger. And mm -hmm. so to think about that and and for my presentation of the gospel, I really just wanted to focus in on, on the idea of that being a gift, the gift of eternal life. And Paul calls it the free gift. There's a unique word in Greek for the phrase free gift compared mm -hmm. to the word gift. And it's all contingent on the character of God. And so to see that reflected in the services and then being able to be a part of it, it was so cool because even during the six o'clock, I don't have uh, solid relationships with everybody else that was on stage. Like I've met them before. I'm yeah. not really close with them, but I was kind of like 
wow, they're really good at this. Like they're mm -hmm. talented. God's using <laughs> them. This is really cool. And I was like, I am, I can't believe I get to be a part of this service. I can't believe they're letting me up there. I told like five people after the service, they came up to me. I was like, they're letting just about anybody go up there to do that. Cause I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I got to be a part of what Mike and the team did. And I, I've heard so many things from people this year that has been different from the past years and that everybody says mm. they love it and appreciate it. But mm. I've heard from many people that have said that was very impactful. It was mm. one of their favorites and it just hit home. Mm. The, it, it hit home with them. And mm. so if anything, for me, I was thinking, okay, I'm going up there, but it's it's like six minutes this time. Yeah, you know? So it's were... not it's not 35. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, I want to make sure I, you know, I do right by that. So if anything, that was the curveball for me. And I'm like, okay, short and sweet, but here we go, just the gospel, yeah. you know, um, as opposed to exegeting a passage and then reminding people, it's it's an opportunity to just simply say. Just call. Just call. Yep. yep. And then, call and, 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 and yep. we've already been singing it too, yep. which is why, you know, from the outside and looking at myself as a young intern and here I am now, these are easy services to plug into. These are e easy services to preach in because I'm not starting and finishing the, the content. Mm. Like all these services, if you get, for those of you that are listening that have been a part of a, a service before, you might understand what I'm saying when I say like ev everyone's on board with what needs to be communicated and we're all doing our part to communicate mm -hmm. it. And so it, it alleviates the little bit of like, okay, oh, well, here's the pulpit time. Yeah. You know, people thought I was... I had family coming in thinking I'd be preaching for 30 minutes, but they were like, oh, you were just up there for a few minutes doing the gospel. I was like, yeah, that's what it's we're all about. That's all that's needed. That's all that's needed. <laughs> that, that's, that's what we're about on Christmas Eve, yeah. you know, and then. Well, it's you know, funny that you say Good Friday as well. You're kind of equating the two because you're right. It is kind of the Christmas and Easter crowd. It feels similar. And there's, yeah. there's something about those are the two specialty services as a worship team. We really want to put effort into because mm -hmm. we we value the creativity. We value the the excellence and the quality of the presentation, but more importantly, the content and who the audience is. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I had my family in town as well for the weekend and they came to Christmas Day, but um, they were referencing, you know, the whole Christmas and Easter crowd as well. And and they're, one of one of my family members was like, I just sometimes don't even like Good Friday service because it just gets a little dark. Mm -hmm. You know, I want something that's more upbeat yeah. and more fun. And yeah, it right. is. I mean, that's what Good Friday sure. is meant to be. But Christmas Eve is meant to be this celebration of the incarnation of Christ yeah. and knowing that he put on flesh and dwelt among us and that we can now have new life because of that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, he can't get to the cross before he becomes a baby yeah. and he can't get to the cross before he lives a sinless life. Yeah. And, and so there's that moment of what Christmas represents for us. One thing I, I did want to share, especially to parents out there, don't underestimate how important it is to pair the excitement of gift giving and Christmas as your kids see it with the opportunity to attend these services because I, I grew up in a Christian home and this was always part of my Christmas experience. And it did wonders in the sense that I, I did learn and grow to appreciate going to church as well. Mm -hmm. you know, the, it's not, it wasn't just, okay, I, we got to get through this thing so we can right. get home and finally open gifts. Like the, very early on, by the time I was an early teenager, like I had an intrinsic value of that experience because yes, the presents are awesome and all the younger people are going to love that. You know, it's Christmas waking up on Christmas morning, <laughs> but for our FBC families, the more you can do to keep pairing mm. that kind of family mm. moments mm. with biblical truths, mm. right. I, I assure you, I'm telling you, your kids will see that mm. and, and it would take them a lot of work and energy to nitpick through that. Mm. Right. And my parents made it hard to nitpick through it. I would have to listen to my dad read Luke 2 before I could touch a single present. Mm -hmm. Now, I could I could be the rebellious <laughs> teen and roll my eyes and hate it year after year, but then I was like, you know what? This is part of the, Embrace the, the meditation and anticipation, and clearly it means enough to my dad. So we're like, we're not touching gifts until he reads that. Why? Mm -hmm. And now I can't wait to be that kind of dad that mm -hmm. says Luke 2, here we go. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't know where I'm going with that other than I just encourage families to keep families. keep combining tradition and biblical truth with the experience because there are a lot of people out there hurting, suffering, wanting Christmas Day or Christmas gifts to be the rescue, mm -hmm. the distraction, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. after a distraction nowadays, mm -hmm. but the solution, it came to us under a star a long time ago. Right, yeah, and just keeping like the Christ and Christmas kind of like you're oh, saying. Oh, yeah. 
Like, uh, my family does a lot of stuff Christmas Eve, and I almost like Christmas Eve more than Christmas Day mm. because they the things we do just builds the anticipation. Sure. Like, yeah. uh, we sing happy birthday to Jesus. Like, yeah. You know, just like little <laughs> things like that. Yeah. But it's like the focus is very much God and Christ, and I just think all those traditions lined up make mm-hmm. the holidays so fun. Well, it's funny that you guys are talking about families because the worship team did have a, a very intentional emphasis for families Knowing that, yes, Christmas Eve is meant to be a specialty service, but then mm-hmm. Christmas Day, that we didn't have children's ministry, mm-hmm. and we wanted everybody Come in the, the room together. Yeah, yeah. And so to involve kids on the stage, and to involve hand motions, and to um, have families up there reading scripture together yeah. was a value that we wanted to set up to say, yes, yeah, so when you're mentioning, Caleb, as a kid, you're that's just a part of growing up here. Yeah. So when the kids are in the audience and they're experiencing it, they're like, oh, there is something for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't just have to color my coloring book the entire time. Yeah. I can sure. enga- I can engage. Yeah. You know, there's something yeah. about seeing somebody who is my age up on stage. Or mm-hmm. I think, Caleb, something you mentioned to us a while ago as a worship team, you're like, you know, when videos go on the screen, I'm paying attention as a kid, you know? And so <laughs> yeah. let's let's put some things up there that were fun and and videos yeah. from global church partners around the world. So yeah. it's, it kind of, you know, it just yeah. allowed for families to engage. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, well, yeah. even Mark getting off the stage and handing out a couple gifts definitely got everyone's attention. Yeah, like, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, because John 3.16 is the passage mm-hmm. um, of the sermon. This is Sermon Spotlight, right? Yeah, so, right, right. You know, so we're looking at that for the last several weeks, but unpacking away from the eyes of Nicodemus, I felt was um, refreshing, but oh, yeah. also impactful right. yeah. to know that, you know, over 600 laws he's there trying to to acknowledge and, and mm-hmm. keep. And here he is just like, what? I just have to believe? What's yeah. going on here? Yeah. And and it's there's such a value to taking that approach when, when you're in an assembly like that. Well, let's think about the original audience, the original conversation that this first came out, because it is very easy to find church experiences that won't, won't care about that mm-hmm. depth or the original. We'll just quote it and toss it in a, a liturgy of sorts or, or an outline and then kind of do check off the Christmas box. But you're right to, and I, I posted to uh, the youth page or the Facebook page or something, something about uh, maybe it was Sermon Spotlight last week. The caption was, e- even if we're hearing John 3.16 for the 10,000th time, mm-hmm. it is worth it mm-hmm. and, and worth centering around mm-hmm. as we think through this series and this season. I mean, even I had a gut reaction to seeing John 3.16 up in the middle <laughs> of the decoration on the stage, like when I saw that months ago, I was like, duh. <laughs> but then I'm like, duh, of course, why wouldn't we? Why right. wouldn't we do that? And so to your point, Babby and, and Mark as well, those kids being in there on Christmas morning, not only their parents you know, saying, this is a value, we're gonna go to this service, but then they get to see Mark Carey act a little bit different. They get to see every, something mm-hmm. seems more familial about this room, yeah. right? And that's what right. we're about. Like every time you want to do something like that, what you're really trying to do is undo the misconception that this is a formal religious institution, mm-hmm. you know, but to mm-hmm. bring those kids on that morning and and see the familial things happening and the service is so different, man, it, it, that's going to stand out. That's going to leave an impact. I grew up in this church and I still remember all the services that were so different and mm-hmm. people were doing different things and I got to hear it from different people. Yeah, so, you know, so it's funny you say that Mark gave out a gift and maybe that is what's going to stand out for people. You know, yeah. Mark got off the stage. <laughs> What's well, funny, Abby sermon, first said when Mark, know? when Mark, stop talking or whatever i was like yeah i bet a lot of people are happy about that you know like <laughs> well when mark stopped and he's he's been joking about that for a couple of weeks he's like on christmas i'll i'm not gonna be able to have a full sermon and it's just funny to see people be like oh wow i wonder what's gonna happen yeah. mark can't talk for 35 well, every, everybody was wondering what's in the gifts too yeah, yeah. yeah right and he's like yeah. i wrapped them myself so there you go <laughs> it's the rest of his sermon in 10 minute increments but, right no. yeah um, the, the, but there's i mean there is something to john three sixteen that oh, yeah. d- just resonates with you and you can latch on to it as part of Christmas season because mm-hmm. it's for God so loved the world that he gave mm-hmm. his only son. And so there's this gift component of that that you mm-hmm. can really latch on to. And even the the summary of for God so loved, that was the end of that Nicodemus video. Mm-hmm. It was resonating with that kind of you know uh, character that um, mm-hmm. was being portrayed there of Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. And it's for the it's God's love Mm-hmm. Of why he did this, and and how can we as a body respond to that? It's kind of what Mark's sermon was like the week before. Mm-hmm. You know, whoever believes 
you know, it's just, just receive it. And that was the idea of that gift giving component too, of like, all you have to do is receive. Mm-hmm. It's not the works. It's not what we're doing. We're not up against judging ourselves off of each other of like, am I better than you right. in order to get to heaven? Right. And it's worth people hearing that everything we're, we're doing here as part of the local church is in response to a gift that has already been given to, to undo that idea that it's in order to attain or, you know, get somewhere, the self-help, you know, Christian TED Talk mentality. We're not trying to come off that way. That's not what we're yeah. trying to be. We're not trying to be your answer. We're just trying to be a mirror that points up and says, I've been changed by him. You know, would you like to? Mm-hmm. And and that's a that's a truth that's not just unique to the Christmas season, but we can keep doing that. So yeah, John three sixteen, it's it's cliche, but for a reason. Yeah. That's what it all comes down to. It's summed up in one sentence yeah. and it's in the context of the best book to understand what the rest of the Bible's about. Right. So. Hitting John. Well, and speaking of families, so my whole family was in town and there has just been a number of situations where my grandmother who lives with me now mm. um, has been up against and hasn't been able to get to church. Mm. Um, we're not sure if she's a believer or not. I've had a few different conversations and she has given me those answers of, well, you know, I'm good enough. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, another kind of thing came up where she just wasn't feeling up to it, even with all of us in town, to come to Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. But I came home right afterwards, pulled it up online, said, let's watch this together. So yeah. thankfully for the technology, we were able to experience that together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my mom was sitting next to me. She's like, this is probably even better than her being there because she can sit with you <laughs> and watch the service <laughs> yeah, all at the same sure. time. And she appreciated it. And yeah, so, yeah. again, it's just having those moments for even as a believer to be re-encouraged of this gift of grace mm-hmm. that God has given us, but mm-hmm. for the non-believer who there were probably plenty of people out there Christmas Eve and Christmas Day even, right. mm-hmm. that you can say, yes, I, this is something that I don't have to do myself. It's not by works of righteousness that we've done, but in accordance to his mercy that he saved us. So there's like, a, it's just yeah, yeah. a kind of a cool perspective to say, families, don't <laughs> don't lose sight of, that mm-hmm. simple message mm-hmm. because you can share it with anybody. Don't lose sight of the simple message. Keep sharing it and communicating it th- through the new year. You mm-hmm. know, don't, don't make a culture where it's it's you have to get through this in order to get to the gifts and the Christmas break and all the fun, but bring mm-hmm. it back up again. And, and yep. as we look towards a new year and now the whole world shifts towards gift returns and resolutions and 10 other forms of stress, you know, we can yep. really set the tone for 2023 and what's to come in the and new year as well. That is going to happen. So Mark yeah. shared with us last week of this coming week is going to be more of a, a heart of prayer mm-hmm. um, for um, our community, a prayer for the new year, mm-hmm. prayer for people who don't know the Lord. And um, Mm -hmm. an emphasis on that for not just this coming week, but for the next several weeks, months, and years to come. And to Mm -hmm. where it can be a culture shift that we are praying for people that don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praying for people who need to hear that John 3.16 message. Mm -hmm. And leads us into this focus of being called building bridges. So you're going to be hearing more about that coming up. Um, But the emphasis is we know that it starts with God. It exists with God and it ends with God. There's mm-hmm. not nothing that we're going to do to accomplish salvation for anybody else. Mm-hmm. So it starts yeah, yeah. with prayer and it starts with this heavy emphasis to say, God, do your work among us. Mm-hmm. Put on our hearts, who should we be praying for? How can mm-hmm. we pray? Mm-hmm. How can we pray for our community and then lead our steps mm-hmm. over these next several weeks and months to come that we can be a greater, have a greater impact for Christ in our community and the mm-hmm. people around us. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's definitely what's to come. Yeah, it's awesome. And we'll be picking up with the book of Acts again as well. I'll, I'll be in the pulpit two weeks, uh, two Sundays from now, and then we'll continue on through the Bring spring it. with this new focus. And yeah, Acts is getting uh, getting very good. So uh, Abby, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Mark, you're the man. As a reminder to our viewers and listeners, uh, you can find us everywhere on your favorite podcast platform. We pop right up. Just type in Sermon Spotlight for this week. We just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the life here at Fellowship Bible Church. In fact, of the matter, everybody, is that sermons aren't meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love, God bless.